Hello and welcome to a new video about electrical engineering, the physical principles. Last time we heard, okay, there might be force. Yeah? There might be force as, so, as soon as there is something called voltage, yeah? there might be force applied to charges or charged particles, uh, charged elements. There is force. Yeah? Today we want to, to look a little bit deeper what this implies. So let's think about, uh, we have some material. Here is material now. Piece of material. And we do have here And here, two different potentials. Here we have a potential V2, here we have a potential V1. So we have in between, we have this, this, those shall be apart. There's the distance. We call it S. And between those two potentials, we have a potential difference. So actually, we have a voltage in there. There's a voltage between these two positions in my material. The voltage is called U. So that's it. And last time, we said, okay, this this u equals the electrical field multiplied by s, the difference. So the electrical field equals the voltage divided by s. So, in units, we have here volt divided by meters, uh, length is measured in meters, and we have volt by meter. Uh, so, this is volt by meter. This is the unit of the electrical field. So, we can think about the electrical field is somehow the voltage distributed to the whole, to the whole area, right? So actually, when we have a voltage here, we have an electrical field. The local representation of the voltage is the electrical field, and that's here. E. Okay. We have a voltage, which is producing electrical field, or the local representation of the voltage is the electrical field, and then we place in a charge. Q. Here we have it. In positive charge. Huh? Or somewhere else we might have a negative charge, minus Q. Huh? So, one time there is a force in this direction, one time there's a force in this direction. That's it. So now we have charged particles inside there, yeah, and the force applied. And now look at this, look at this pen. Okay, I have it here, let it fall, and zack, it did fall, yeah? it moved. The force was applied and it did move. And now it's also applied, there's also applied a force, but it, it does not move. Why? Because the movement is blocked, because it cannot move, because it is already, it is it's blocked, the movement is blocked. Once 
it is no longer blocked, it will fall further. So, if those charged particles can be moved, yeah, if they are mobile, due to whatever reason, we will have a look into that, but due to whatever reason, if they are mobile, yeah, then they will move, they will start to move. If you apply force to a movable object, it is starting to move. Right? So, we have two, two things. Yeah? We need a force. Applied to charges. Second, the charges need to be movable. If those two prerequisites are fulfilled, then those charges will start to move. Okay? And this is called current. Current is nothing more, nothing less than moved charges. And we can think about it if we look here. Yeah? Here at this position, zack. We count the charges. We count the charges. The positive charging passing in this direction, I count positive. The negative charging, the charges passing in this direction, I also count positive. Okay? And what I need, I just need to check, to count how many Coulomb by second are passing by. And that's my current. Okay? So the symbol, the symbol of the current, uh, symbol, current symbol, is I. The unit is Coulomb per second. So, uh, so many Coulomb per seconds are passing through my area here, yeah? or we call it also, and that's not the main name, 1A ampere named after a physician, uh, which is well known in electrical engineering, yeah? French one. 1 ampere. 1 ampere is a movement of 1 coulomb per second through an area. So if you have an area and there is passing 1 coulomb per second, positive negative charges in one direction, uh, positive charges in one direction, negative charges in the other direction, uh, then um, we know, okay, there is no 1 ampere. 1 ampere is 1 coulomb per second. In reality, it is not that easy. Of course, I cannot sit somewhere and look at the charged particles at ah, electrons or whatever is passing thereby and count it because it's simply too too noisy. There's too much going on. It's not like it, for us it looks solid, but if you would zoom in and zoom in and zoom in to a sub to a, to a atom level, yeah, then you would see oh, a lot of stuff is going on. Every atom is is shaking because it's heat involved and so on. This is not on a fixed place. It's wow, mayhem. Yeah? It's mayhem. And so you cannot just sit there and count do, 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 left, right, left, right, up, positive, yes, 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 yes. Nah, this is not because what in reality is we have this strange movement, big movement of all those particles whoa, 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 going up and down. And overlay, there is a drift. And this drift, if there is such drift, 
Yeah? Overlay, then we have a current. But we can think, we can imagine that it's really moving. Yeah? But in reality, even if it does not fit in reality, for us it should be fine. It should be fine in our imagination. Yeah? So that's, that's current. We already said, okay, the charges must be movable. Uh, they, they need to be movable that they can move. What are the possibilities? Yeah, what materials there are and why it sometimes is working and why not? We'll have a look into next videos. Right? So in the next videos, we will have a look into why charges are allowed or not allowed to travel through a, a material. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.